This is the Google Nexus 5 built by LG, as you may be able to see there, the LG D821. We've got the 16 gigabyte model. Uh, it's the same retail packaging that you would have already seen with the Nexus 7. So let's have a look at what we get. There it is. So this is the Nexus 5, the phone that everyone has been waiting for. Um, first impressions are it's a pretty nice looking phone. It's fairly plain, there's not too much going on um, other than the very noticeable large camera glass on the back. Um, it's a little bit lighter than the previous Nexus 4. Uh, it's 130 grams and the dimensions are not all that dissimilar, uh, which you can see if we do a quick comparison. It's around about the same width. It's a little bit thinner and only a little bit taller. If you compare it to the HTC One, you'll see it's practically the same. Feels really nice in the hand. It's got a Corning Gorilla, Gla Ooh, Gorilla Glass 3 on the front and the same rubberized plastic as the Nexus 7 on the back. Um, there's obviously the 8 megapixel optical image stabilized camera on the back and the flash. You've got your pinhole mic and your headphone port on the top and micro USB charging port on the bottom along with twin speaker grills, uh, but don't let that fool you. One is for the microphone and the other is a speaker. The power buttons and volume buttons are now made of ceramic, if that excites you. And there's a tray for micro SIM on the right hand side. So let's turn it on. There we go. Uh, I'll show you a quick demonstration of how quickly the Nexus 5 uh, turns on and turns off because I was actually quite impressed. So this is it. Uh, this is the Android 4.4 KitKat uh, with the so-called Google Experience Launcher. Um, it's probably pretty familiar. You would have seen plenty of it by now. Um, notably, you've got the new Nexus 5 wallpaper. You've got the white icons and the transparent status bar and action bar at the bottom. Okay, so this is the... <laughs> That's funny, I didn't say OK Google, but thank you. thanks Google. So that's the Google Voice Search, which you've now seen in action. Um, so we've got the Nexus 5 wallpaper and Android 4.4 KitKat. Uh, the Nexus 5 is the first device to ship with it. You'll see the white icons that everyone's been talking about and the transparent status bar up the top here and action bar at the bottom. There's some, some new icons, a new camera app icon and a new dialer. Uh, you'll also see that Google Hangouts is now a stock app for messaging. Uh, let's go into that quickly. Um, here's some information. So obviously now all your SMSs and Google Hangouts are done through the one app, including video calling. What else do we have? We have a few stock Google apps ready. As you can see, we now have Google Drive, Google Keep, and Quick Office is also pre-installed. Uh, one of the other major features is that Google Now has its own home screen, which you can access on the left. Um, if you're a fan of tradition, you can still do it the same way. It'll have the same effect. And obviously, as we just saw the Google Voice Search as part of the Google Experience Launcher, which is also called the Google Search Launcher for obvious reasons. OK, Google. Android Pit. Android, close enough. But it works fine, although it seems to only work in English. Uh, what else do we have? We have larger icons in the app drawer. Um, there's not much on here at the moment because it's fairly fresh out of the box. But if we check our settings, you can see Android 4.4 and our new animation. KitKat, it's not very exciting, but there you have it anyway. There's a few more settings options in Android 4.4 KitKat as well, like tap and pay, which brings NFC payment options to your device. So all you need to do is connect it to a app like Google Wallet or another app of the same kind, and you can make NFC payments at cash registers or checkouts. Uh, the location services have changed a little bit. There's now different modes for battery consumption. So high accuracy, battery saving and device only. And there is cloud printing as well, which I haven't tried, but I'm sure it works just fine. 
we go in here, you'll also see NFC, of course. The Nexus 5 is LTE enabled, which is nice considering the Nexus 4 wasn't. Uh, you've now got the option to set your default SMS app if Hangouts is not your thing. And there's also a mobile plan so you can keep tabs on your expenses if you're on a data plan or a uh, call cost plan that you need to keep track of. The screen on the Nexus 5 is really, really impressive. It's a 4.95 inch uh, full HD IPS LCD screen. It's got 1920 by 1080 full HD resolution and equal, equates to 445 pixels per inch, which is pretty impressive. It's, it's really bright, it looks fantastic. Um, and it's obviously a great surface for reading, watching movies, playing games, that kind of stuff. Um, one thing about the Nexus 5 that not everyone is happy about is the battery life. It's got a 2300 milliampere battery, which is not a huge uh, increase since the Nexus 4, but it, in my brief experience, it seems to be lasting okay. The battery management seems to be a little bit better, but it's kind of getting patchy reports of having good battery life one day, bad the next, uh, according to other sites that have got the device as well. Charging time though is quite impressive. Uh, I had it down to about 10%. I plugged it into charge and it was fully charged in less than two hours, which is obviously a lot better than some other Android devices out there. Okay, so here we have a video on YouTube. The volume is not that great, to be honest. It's, um, you think you're on a low volume, but it's actually as loud as it goes and the speaker is not particularly fantastic either. Let's skip through to some sound. As you can tell, it's not really that fantastic. The dialer in Android 4.4 has also been improved. It's got a lot more Google content. Uh, so if you're in your dialer and you're searching for something, it will it'll autocomplete uh, your contacts if there are obviously any in the phone, but you can also now do some searching from within the dialer Which we can't do because we're not connected at the moment. We don't want that So maybe you want to search for pizza Anyway, so that's all nice to know It's basically bringing the Google experience to every aspect of the phone which may not be everyone's cup of tea But it's definitely handy if you like using Google services, which is probably why you'd buy a Nexus 5 in the first place the processor is pretty noticeable. Uh, the Nexus 5 has a quad-core Snapdragon 800 uh, ticking at 2.26 gigahertz, um, and it's really, really fast. It's, it's really a nice phone to use for processing tasks, but if you are in Chrome, it's quite quick. Uh, obviously, the LTE speeds help with that but there's still a little bit of lag time. If you're, if you're swiping up and down, you will notice it's still, get rid of that. Still not all that fantastic, but generally speaking, the Nexus 5 is blazing fast and it's really quite noticeable. On the home screen, you've also got some different management options. If you do a long press, you'll now get your home screen management here. You'll get a wallpaper, widgets, and settings shortcut. Wallpapers will already be pretty familiar with. But there's all the nice new Nexus wallpapers. Widget management, again, nice and easy to get to. And settings will take you straight to your Google settings. Make sure you've got Google now turned on, of course. So the Nexus 5 has a new camera app, and there is an improved camera on board as well. It's an 8 megapixel camera with optical image stabilization. A lot was made of the camera on the Nexus 5 in the end, in the build-up to its release, hoping that finally a Nexus camera would be fantastic. It's not particularly fantastic. It's, it's definitely better than the Nexus 4, especially in low light conditions with the optical image stabilization. It really does perform quite well. Um, but if you want a replacement for a point and shoot camera, you probably need to look somewhere else. There's also HDR plus mode, which is one of the really impressive features of the Nexus 5 camera. Um, and you've got the same modes you had before. On the back, we've got a rigid case, which you can't actually pull apart. I mean, you can if you really want to, but you're not supposed to. The battery is again, non-replaceable. 
um, and there's obviously no micro SD expansion slot, which again, doesn't make everybody happy, but you can buy 32 gig models of the Nexus 5, so that's not so terrible. There's also no infrared blaster, even though Android KitKat does actually support the use of that. So that's the Nexus 5 in a 10 minute nutshell. Um, if you wanna read more, you can read our full review on the androidpit.com website. And it's not the greatest phone in the world, but for the price, it's still pretty unbeatable. But what do you think?